Hello, everybody. This is Frédéric Billet, and you are listening to An Hour in Billet's Head, real people with real challenges teaching us real lessons. Hello, 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 everybody. This is Frédéric Billet. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am talking to you from right here in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. I am a writer. I am a host. I am a friend. I am a partner. I am an animal lover. I am a tough guy. I am, I am a sensitive guy. I do what I want and I do it when I want it. Shout out to all my Facebook followers. Shout out to all my Twitter followers on all five continents. It's incredible. The list is growing and growing and growing. And it's amazing to see this grow. Thank you again. I have followers from India, from Sri Lanka, from Africa, from Chow, from the United States, from Canada, from everywhere, from Europe, from around the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for your love. This podcast is about entering the minds and the souls of real people, facing real challenges, teaching us real lessons. It is your podcast. It is a personal journal podcast. It is a live podcast. It's free every time you download it on iTunes. Please go over there and subscribe. It is listener supported and fan supported. So the way you can do that is tell a friend, leave a review on iTunes or for more info, articles, podcasts. You can find me at www.frederickby.com. Also on Twitter, at by Fred, or on Facebook, simply type in my name, Frédéric by Writer, and you will be set. For those of you who don't know me, I have a blog that drops Tuesdays and Thursdays. And last week, guess what? I get married. That's right. I get married to the woman of my dreams. I get married to the perfect woman. That's right. She is the perfect woman. And I know that that perfect woman is going to listen to this podcast and she's going to smile while she hears it and I'm going to hear it for years. So last week's blogs were about just that, my marriage. The title was I'm Married. What? Part one and part two. I shared with you my impressions on marriage and how I felt after. The second blog was about a favorite poem of mine uh, that I stumbled upon more than five years ago. And it represents everything I wanted in a woman. And it still represents now what I want in a woman. And I'm happy to say that I have, I am now the husband of that woman. So if you need inspiration, motivation, entertainment, and everything in between, go now, frederickby.com, and subscribe. All right, this week's subject, stay at home mothers. We're going to cover a few things today. First of all, we're going to talk about this Wednesday's podcast about Joanne Rain. Then I'm going to share with you two stories that had an impact on my decision to make this show. And thirdly, we're going to go over a book review, the title Rich Woman by Kim Kiyosaki. And I'm going to tell you why I chose a book on investing, investing above all, and what it has to do with stay at home mothers. This Wednesday's podcast will be with a great friend of mine, somebody I admire, somebody whose opinion Someone whose opinion I value. Um, I've known her for three years, two to three years. Her name is Joanne Narain. She is and was a stay-at-home mother. We're going to talk about how she met the father of their children. We're going to talk about her life as a stay-at-home mother. We're also going to talk about her life now that are that her children are grown. Then what? What happened when you gave your life to your kids and now they're grown and now they need you less and less? What happens to your life? What's your life's purpose? We're going to talk all about that and more. 
This week's story, I have two stories I want to share with you. The first one, many of you know that I love to train people. I love fitness. I like fitness. Um, you know, it, it, it's been my way of life for quite some time. And recently, I had a discussion with a client of mine. I didn't know that she was a stay-at-home mother. I train her every morning from 8.30 to 9. And as we talked, she looks at me and she just says, you know, this time I have here, the 30 minutes of, of training I, I have here with you is the only time I have for myself. And I thought about this week's podcast and how Joanne mentioned the same exact thing. Stay at home mothers don't take care of themselves enough. And that motivated me to do this show because I know there are there are a lot of stay at home mothers out there. There are a lot of you out there who are listening right now. Do you give of yourself to everybody else but you but you? I don't know. It it sparked a thing in my brain. The second story I want to tell you is a story from the book we're going to talk about today. Her name is Pat. That's right. Pat loved writing. She loved current affairs. Pat majored in political science and journalism. She knew what she wanted to do from an early age. She wanted to travel the world as a foreign correspondent, writing about global events. And she did just that. She graduated from university. Pat was a determined person with big ambitions. She was single. Life was great. She was on the path to success. She was always searching for facts and was truly a news junkie. She subscribed to five different newspapers and had the news channel on night and day. That's right, Pat was a passionate woman. If you ever wanted to know what was going on in the world, you could ask Pat. She had that certainty, you know, that self-assurance that we all admire. <laughs> and uh, she knew what she wanted and she knew where she was going. But then life happened. His name is Grant. Grant is a gorgeous, sexy male. She married him. Soon, she fell pregnant. And it was completely unplanned. Another unexpected event. And they figured, you know what? Since we wanted two or three children anyway, we might as well have them now. I can put my journalism career on hold for a while. And once the children were will be grown, I'll just resume my career. She became a stay-at-home mother with three wonderful children. Grant got promoted several times, and today he is a top executive making really, really good money. So you know what? Pat can't complain. They have it all. They never really needed the money from a second job, so she never went back to journalism. Now her kids are grown. And soon they will be entering college. Now she feels like she has the time to devote to her writing career. But that was 15 years ago. That was almost 20 years ago. The news world changed. And Pat feels she lost so much time and momentum over the years. She is unsure if she has the energy to do what it takes to get back into the game. I'm going to stop here and let you read the rest. This story leads me to this week's book review. I think the stay at home mothers is a very, very important subject. I think it's a fun subject. I also think it's a serious subject. Today's book review is written by Kim Kiyosaki. The title is Rich Woman, published by Rich Press. Now, you're going to ask me, why? Why, Fred? Why a book on investing when we're talking about 
stay-at-home mothers. Well, as you will see in this book, being rich represents more than money. It's about fulfillment. It's about independence. It is about physical, emotional, spiritual well-being. And the reason why I chose that book is because Kim represents just that. Let me give you a quick summary of the content, the theme. Kim Kiyosaki is the wife of best-selling author Robert Kiyosaki, the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And rich woman is for women who insist on being independent, more specifically financially independent, without depending on a man, family, company, or government to take care of them. In her book, Kiyosaki applies the same money-making strategies that have made Rich Dad, Poor Dad one of the greatest publishing success stories of all time. But her voice, her genuine voice, is aimed directly at women. Women, no matter what your financial background is or your current job situation, rich woman provides the essential roadmap for any woman who aspires to be financially free. Let's face it, women. What worked for our mothers and grandmothers is not working for most of you. Daughters and granddaughters, now is the time for women to get smarter. The reaction I got, you know, from this book, first of all, it was inspiring. It was, it was enlightening and it perspired truth. My wife read it. <laughs> and if you would know her, she has such a hard time going through an English book because she is French, but she read it from cover to cover. And not only that, she was immersed in that book. She learned from that book. If she can read this, you can too. Let me tell you why I love this book. Even more than that, I'm going to tell you why I love Kim. Kim is honest. She cares about women and their well-being. To me, she is successful and she has a proven track record. She started from scratch and she gives advice that we can count on. The issues the book raised. First, ignorance from women about the what ifs of life. She gives you a really good reality check about what could happen. The, the issues that also she raises are about financial education and dependence upon a man. That's right. A man is not a financial plan. And the other issue she raises is also an issue I talked about earlier. Women forget themselves and they do everything for others. I love this book so much and I love Kim so much. Let me give you a little bit of stats from page 58 of the book. According to the book, those stats are from 2006 and I checked and those stats are fairly accurate with today's standards. The first one, here we're talking about the US. 47% of women over the age of 50 are single. This means they are financially responsible for themselves. Another stat is women's retirement income is less than that of men because a woman is away from workforce an average of 14.7 years as compared to 1.6 years for men. Women are typically the primary caretaker of the home. This, along with lower salaries, adds up to retirement benefits that are only about one-fourth of those of men. And this is according to the National Center for Women in Retirement Research. 50% of marriages end in divorce. And who typically ends up with the children? That's right, the women. So now she is solely financially responsible for herself and her children. And what is the number one subject couples fight about? You guessed it. Money. In the first year after a divorce, a woman's standard of living drops an average of 73%. That's huge. It's huge. Of the elderly living in poverty, three out of four are women, according to Morningstar Fund Investor. And 80% of the women were not poor when their husbands were alive. Can you believe this? Can you believe this? Can, 
Can you imagine putting your entire financial well-being into the hands of someone else? This is the reason why I chose this book for stay-at-home mothers, because when you're a stay-at-home mother, you are dependent upon somebody else. And those stats relate to the number one issue about stay-at-home mothers, which is taking care of ourselves. Taking care of ourselves means, in a large part, taking care of our finances. And I will quote Susie Orman here, you're not a powerful woman until you have control over your finances. I love this book. My overall impression of this book, I mean, it's written simply as any one of their books of the Rich Dad series. It is easily understandable, which I think is a huge plus. Anyone can read this. The layman can read this. I listen to Rich Dad Radio every week. I listen to Kim in interviews. I listen to Kim on TV shows. Her passion to educate and encourage women to create the peace of mind they want and deserve in their lives comes through in everything that she does. Let me tell you the impact it had on my wife. She became conscious of taking care of her finances. She became conscious of being responsible for her future. I am not responsible for her financial future. Although we are together, she understands that she has to build something for herself. What I, what I get out of this book is really self-power, take control, not just of money, but of our lives. And I want to finish this, women. I want to leave you with this. Stay at home, mothers. Read this book and take care of yourselves. This Wednesday, Joanne Narain. Stay at home, mother. Be there. That's all for today. Thank you for listening, and I hope you found it helpful. If you want to listen to more episodes, you can visit frederickbuy.com slash podcast. If you'd like to connect, you can also tweet me at by Fred, or you can find me on Facebook at Frederick by Writer. And remember, live with purpose passion and love.